the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law, upon love of you and of our neighbour. Grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Haggai. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord was addressed through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, high commissioner of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, as follows. The Lord of hosts says this, This people says, The time has not yet come to rebuild the temple of the Lord. And the word of the Lord was addressed through the prophet Haggai as follows, In this a time, Is this a time for you to live in your paneled houses when this house lies in ruins? So now the Lord of hosts says this, Reflect carefully how things have gone for you. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat but never have enough. Drink but never have your fill. Put on clothes but do not feel warm. The wage earner gets his wages only to put them in a purse riddled with holes. Reflect carefully how things have gone for you. So go to the hill country, fetch wood, and rebuild the house. I shall then take pleasure in it and be glorified there, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing a new song to the Lord, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion's sons exult in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. Let the faithful rejoice in their glory. Shout for joy and take their rest. Let the praise of God be on their lips. This honor is for all his faithful. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia. Alleluia. Open my eyes, says the Lord, that I may consider the wonders of your law. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Herod the Tetrarch had heard about all that was being done by Jesus, and he was puzzled because some people were saying that John had risen from the dead, other that Elijah had reappeared, still others that one of the ancient prophets had come back to life. But Herod said, John, I beheaded him, so who is this I hear such reports about? And he was anxious to see Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Prophets are considered dangerous people. Look at the Old Testament stories of the prophets. Yet very often we misunderstand the meaning of the word prophet. Prophet sometimes today is seen like a fortune teller, someone who looks and looks at the cards and looks at the tarot and looks at this. But that's not what a prophet is. It's certainly not what the prophet of the Old Testament's were. And it's certainly not the prophecy of Jesus. The prophet is someone who reads the signs of the times. That's why prophets are so unpopular. The prophet is someone who can see this is happening and because of this, the consequences will be this. So insofar as the prophet talks about what will happen if nothing changes and looks to the future and says, this is what will happen, yes, Sometimes people can, be, can misunderstand the meaning of the word prophet as a fortune teller. But they can tell the future on the basis of what's happening today. That's why prophets are unpopular. We do not like to be told what's happening today. So much of what is happening beginning now in Rome with the Synod. The whole point of the Synod is not to change the church, is not to change the doctrine of the church, because that cannot be changed, because it is the truth given to us by Jesus Christ. It is the lived truth and foundation on which the church is built. It cannot change. Not a question, it might be changed, it cannot be changed. Why? Because it is the truth as given to us by the one who claimed, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what is the synod? What's happening with all these people coming in Rome? What's happened with all of us who were asked over several years to look and to say, Well, it's not that we say, well, we're not going to have confession anymore because I don't like going to confession. That's not what it's about. Jesus gives us the job description for the synod. And it's quite simply this. He gives us a reprimand. He says, you can look up at the sky. You can say, oh, it's going to rain soon. But you cannot read the signs of the times. The prophet is the one who reads the signs of the times. And when they read it, people don't like to hear what's being said. Why? Because we would have to change the way we live. So the prophet who says that we are too selfish, we don't want to hear that. The prophet who says that marriage is being undermined, people don't want to hear that. The the prophet that says, I can do what, the person who says, I can do what I like, and it doesn't matter, I'm not worried about what other people think. The prophet 
who highlights the dangerous nature of that sort of mindset will not be welcome. Yet those are the realities of the signs of our times. The tragedies that we see that are the consequence of selfishness, the consequence of individualism that just says it's all about me. The prophet is the one who says, if you carry on like that, you're going to be in trouble. The people don't want to hear that. That's why the prophets are so important. That's why Herod got rid of John the Baptist. Why? Because he was saying, you're being unfaithful. You're being unfaithful. And so he had to get rid of him. The greatest witness of the faith we have is the witness of the truth. The truth of Jesus Christ. And the wisdom that comes from that truth. Remember, it is the truth. And it is only that truth that sets us free. So today, let us pray for all the bishops and the Holy Father and all those people who are gathering together in Rome for this synod, that they will do what the Holy Spirit guides them to do, not what the world wants them to do, not what factions within the church want them to do, not what particular interest groups want them to do. It is the Holy Spirit who guides us and guides the church. May the Holy Spirit be in the hearts of all those who would help us understand the times in which we live, read the signs of the time in which we live, so that we may serve the people in truth and honesty and the love of Christ, the people of the times in which we all live live. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given, human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. You, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. Receive with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. We make this prayer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that your creatures serve you, that all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, make, therefore, make these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy keep us free from sin. And protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me.
let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and